It's time for another nickel hunt, and I'm excited because we've got a proof ender right there. Hey everybody, it's Rob with Rob Finds Treasure, and that's right, I feel like doing a one-box nickel hunt. I picked up three boxes, and I'm saving two for the four-channel nickel battle on Ravenhawk's channel tomorrow night, and since I have an extra box, why not hunt it? So I popped open the top, and sure enough, there is a proof ender. Now, I was just going to hunt this on my own and not do a video, but because there's a proof ender, and we haven't checked any of the other sides yet, I figured I may as well film it. Plus, there seems to be a pretty good amount of older Jeffersons mixed in here, so it could be a good box, hoping it's a good box, hoping there's enough finds to make this video fun. You guys know the drill. I'll be using my nickel coin mat. I'll be using my microscope. I'll be using all the things I can to find any of the key dates, semi-key dates, war nickels, buffalo nickels, and of course, any errors and varieties for both the Buffalo and the Jefferson Nickel series. Now, of course, I'm always on the lookout for possibly another V-nickel. I've only found three in the history of all the nickel boxes I've hunted, but we have found one within the last month, and that made me happy. All right, enough said. Let's get this hunt started. First roll, we'll be showing you guys all the finds, probably in rapid fire succession, unless we want to spend a little more time on a particular find. I'll bring you in on my first good find. Well, I'll be, beginner's luck, I guess, crazy. First roll, saw Crazy Edge, put the wrapper to the side, already kind of took a peek. That's looking pretty silvery, in my opinion. A 1942, though, it looks silver to me. And it is a 42 Philadelphia minted silver war nickel, 35% silver, roll one, first coin I pulled out of the roll, and we're on the board with silver. You guys know I struggle to find silver in my area, so to get one early, first roll of the box, and be the first year they produced it, that is pretty dang cool. I'll take that all day. Early find, silver to boot. We're on the board. Now I'm excited. Same roll, and we've got ourselves a 1941 nickel, and it is minted in Denver. Two finds, first roll. Still the same roll that I would show all the finds. Here's a 1952, and that might be an S. And it is. A 52S just missed a semi-key date by a year, but it's still a nice find. And that's three finds in roll one. And because that's three finds, I figured we would go ahead and keep you guys here for a second, just in case we get something else that I need to bring you in for early on. And of course, you keep filming, you don't find another one. Still three finds in the first roll. We're off to a banging start. Let's get on to roll two next. Roll three has a find, and it is in terrible shape, but it is a 1947 Denver minted nickel. Probably not going to keep it, but wanted to show it anyway. We're on roll four, and that is that 2007 proof ender. Let's see what other goodies are in there. As mentioned, 2007 proof minted in San Francisco. Can't get mad at that. Another find for the board. We're on roll seven, and uh, <laughs> this makes me happy. I see a buffalo back, and I see a, what I think is a Denver mint as well. Let's take a peek. Looks like it's a Denver mint. We'll look at the mint mark under the scope first. Most definitely a Denver mint. Unfortunately, there's pretty good wear on this buffalo. Almost no horn visible. Pretty obliterated. Might be an early one, though. Or it might be a dateless one. I don't think we're going to get a date with the naked eye or under magnification. We'll take a quick peek under the scope, see if we can make anything out there. Man, that's a bummer. I can't make any date out whatsoever. So guess what we're going to do? We're going to have to nicodate it. It's a bummer that it has a mint mark and it's going to need nicodate, but I've got to know the date on it. So give me a second. 
I'll set the tripod up and we'll do a live Nicodate with you. So the product I'm using is called Nicodate. It date restores on anything comprised of nickel. Pretty much works on any shield nickel, buffalo nickel, Jefferson nickel, you name it. You do not want to use it on anything else. And let me go ahead and get this set up. I'll show you what I do. I put the smallest drop just at that little date area. And I use something to kind of move around the fluid just to try to keep it contained into one section so it doesn't get too far into the other parts of the nickel. So I'll do it just like that. And we'll give it a few seconds here to work its magic. You don't want to apply Nicodate more than once because you can really, really do even further damage and maybe not even see the date. But we're going to see if we can see a date slowly come through the before it darkens and uh, see about getting a date off this one. I think I'm already seeing part of the one. Maybe it's 1916 or 1915. We'll let it sit for just a few more minutes here and we'll get it exposed, and I'll bring you back once I have a date pulled off this nickel. You guys are not gonna believe this. You can see it right there. Are you kidding me? This is a 1913 nickel, variety two, because it has the flat mound, Denver. 1913D is a semi-ketate nickel. Are you kidding me? If we would have saw the date, we would not have needed to nicodate it. I'm a little bit bummed about that, but it is most certainly a 1913D. Let me bring the red book up to show you the value in the red book values of this nickel. So I'm still kind of reeling over the fact that it's a 1913D and I had to nicodate it. But all that aside, 1913D variety two, Variety 2 being the flat mound, Variety 1 being the raised mound. So we know it's a Variety 2. We know it's a 1913D. 1913D Variety 2, only 4.156 million minted. In G4 retail value, $120. Now in the blue book, which is what you would get for it if you sold it, it's about a $65 nickel. Unfortunately, we had to nicodate it, and nicodating does reduce the value by about 75%. So at a quarter of the value blue book of 65, we're looking about a $20 nickel. Now, that's a bummer, and it is heavily nicodated, of course, because I had to get the date, but I don't even know if I have a 1913D Variety 2 in my book, and if I do, I'm sure I nicodated it as well. Either way, this has been a pretty good week for me. I have now found my second semi-key date coin, a 1913S in my last penny hunt, and now a 1913D in my nickel hunt. And I guess I'll point out, this nickel box was picked up with those penny boxes. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping this is a sight of good things to come, having found a semi-key date buffalo nickel and a war nickel and a proof in the first seven rolls. All right, let me get back to the hunt. Bummer I had to nicodate it, but I'll take a semi key date buffalo nickel any day. We're on roll number nine, hunting through the roll. I exposed the edge and I thought I saw a 39 and I did. We have a 1939. Will it have a mint mark? It's not in bad shape either, so it looks like it could be a good one. A 1939S. A 1939S is a key date nickel right there. Let me get some information on this for you guys and I'll bring you back in. So here's that 39 and I would say this qualifies as an XF40 at least. Could be slightly better, could be a very fine 35, you never know, but I'm thinking it's at least an XF40. So when I go to 39S, 6.63 million minted in Extra fine 40 condition, about $13 in the retail book, probably about six or seven dollars in the blue book, but definitely, definitely a very nice one. And I'm pretty sure this one, because it's a key date, will likely upgrade in my album as well, which I will bring you guys in at the end of the video and see if it does. But to be XF, you got to have a well defined but worn cheekbone and hairlines. And I definitely see some pretty good definition there a little bit worn as described 
but in great shape nonetheless. Very happy with this one. We have now found a semi-key date Buffalo nickel and a key date Jefferson nickel already and not even nine rolls hunted. Well, it's been a few rolls, but we're on roll 15 and we've got another find finally. And this one's a 1948 minted in Philadelphia. Roll 16 in the box is staying hot because I was just searching through this roll and I missed it by the edge, but take a look at what's peeking out as I slid them down. Another war nickel, 1943, cool patina on it, minted in Philadelphia. So we will want to check the 43 over 42 to see if we have that. On the 1943 over 42 war nickel, they actually had a two here that they stamped the three over. Now that one looks odd. I will look at that under my scope, but it doesn't show some of the characteristics that I'd want to see for a three over two, but there's also a doubled eye on there as well that you can check for. And there's just some damage on this one, unfortunately, but this part of the eye has been doubled and you would see it over here. I don't see that, but I do want to spend a few extra seconds on this three really quick. Yeah, I don't see anything. You would clearly see the hook of the two right here. I may take a lint-free cloth and just wipe that down. There's already some pitting on this coin. It's been subjected to something that corroded it a little bit, but I want to take a little closer look at that. If I don't find anything worth showing, I'll go ahead and put it on the board and bring you back in on the next find. If I think I see something, I'll bring you back in right away. Roll 18, we've got another find, and this one is a 1953 minted in Denver. Roll 19, we're gonna have our first 2009 nickel of the box, minted in Denver as well. As you guys know, I collect these because they are lower minted than the other years. Not a lot of value in them, pretty much face value, but I still pull them out. Let's get back to the hunt. Roll 21, another 1953 Denver. Roll 22, we have found a 1948 Philadelphia. Same roll, 1940 Philadelphia. Roll 23, second coin down is another 40s nickel, and it is a 46 Denver. One year off silver this time, but we've already got two in the box. Roll 24, a 1941 facing us. Minted in Denver, I believe. No, a 41S. Not a key date or semi-key date, but another S-minted nickel nonetheless. Same roll and a very nice 1959 Denver minted nickel. Common as they come, but it's a nicer shape, so it's a nicer find. Roll 27, we've got another 1953 nickel. It's in pretty bad shape, minted in Denver, but we'll add it to the board and see what else we can uncover. Roll number 30, and uh, I think we have another 1942 here, and because of the damage or corrosion on it, I can't see if it's a war nickel yet. Let's flip it. It is not a war nickel. There would be a mint mark above the Monticello, and it is not there, and I don't think there's a mint mark on the side there for the 42D, I could check for the D over horizontal D. Either way, non-silver 42, Philadelphia minted nickel. So now we have the 42P nickel issue and the 42P silver issue in the same box. Roll 33, just your standard 1959 in pretty decent shape, minted in Denver. Roll 34, I saw Crazy Edge and I'm pretty certain it looked silvery. And it is. We've got our third Silver War nickel of the box. A 1942 again, and this one minted in San Francisco. That's our third 42 find of the box, two of them being silver. We'll take it. Silver number three. And this is definitely one of my better boxes that I've had in a long time. Roll 36. Another 1959, not in great shape. Also minted in Denver. Roll 40. And I was wondering when we'd get our second one, but we got one. Oh, and it's a Philadelphia mint mark, which I very rarely find 2009 Philadelphias. Not in the best shape, 
but now I've got a P and D in the same box. Same roll, and right behind that 09 was the reverse of a 39, and I didn't look for a mint mark on it, but we just flipped it. You'll probably see in the clip previous to this if it had one, but let's take a look anyway. It does not. We'll check it for the doubling, because there's a nice DDR for 1939. And unfortunately, this is not it. There's some damage on it, but it's pretty heavily doubled on the words Monticello and Five Cents. And you could see the extensive doubling, if it was it, on these E's especially. And it's not there. We'll just double check the mint mark area since I have it under the scope. Definitely not, but it's still a 1939 Philadelphia. And that's the second from 1939, including the S key date. Roll 46, and we're nearing the end of the box, but we did find another one, a 1952 Philadelphia Mint this time. Roll 48, and we're not quite done yet because in roll 48, we got a 1946 Philadelphia. Roll 49, and we've got a pretty nice 1940 Denver, I believe. It is. 1940 Denver, not in that bad a shape. Definitely will add it to the collection. Pray for another find or two, but we're almost done. We're on roll 50, and we do have another find, a 1954 Denver. Had it been the S, we could have checked for the S over D, as mentioned on my mat. Well, we finished that box of nickels, and it was one of my better boxes because even though we didn't get a lot of early Jeffersons, we got a lot of good finds. We got nine in the 50s. My favorite of the 50s will be this really great shape, 1959 Denver. It's a common coin, but that condition will make me keep it. In the 40s, we got 10. Nothing spectacular in the 40s. The best would have been this 1942, but it's in terrible shape. So I think the best find will be this 1940, which is in a lot better shape than you normally find 1940 Denvers. I'll check it against my album, as well. In the 30s, we got one. Again, we're not mentioning the key and semi-key dates yet. We got one in the 30s, 1939P, not the DDR. We also got two 2009s, one from Philadelphia, which I rarely get. As far as the best finds of the box, and I was surprised, we got one proof which was an ender. I thought by having a proof ender, we would have got more proofs, but we didn't. We got a semi-key date 1913 Denver Minted Type 2 Buffalo Nickel. Too bad it's in terrible shape. Too bad I had to nick it, it, but a great find nonetheless. We also got three silvers. A 42P, a 43P, and a 42S. That's my most silvers I have found in Nickel Box in quite a long time, and that makes me happy because I get to add that to my 2020 silver jar. And then finally, another great find, a really nice, probably XF40 conditioned, maybe 45, 1939, key date, San Francisco minted Jefferson nickel. I'll take that all day. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this nickel box as much as I did. It is a shame I didn't save this box for the Monday four channel battle on Ravenhawk Coins channel, but once I opened it and saw a proof, there's no way that I could pull that out for that battle. So, we did the hunt, and I'm glad I did because I got some good finds. If you enjoyed the hunt, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And as always, everyone, happy hunting. And thanks for watching. The 1940D I found does not update my book, but the 1939S I had in there is definitely gonna be upgraded by the 39S we found today. That makes me happy. We got to update a nickel from the book.